Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Catherine Smith, a Chair of the Visual Arts Department at Stellenbosch University. And I'm also an artist who is interested in how art and science collaborate. And I also work as a curator, an exhibition maker and a researcher. And I'm here today with my friend and colleague, um, Ashley Walters. Hi Catherine, thank you. Um, hi everyone, so I'm a lecturer. Um, I teach photography and new media in the Visual Arts Department. I'm also a practicing artist, um, and in addition to teaching photography and video, I also make um, drawings and sculpture. So we are very excited to have you um, join us, and we will be sharing um, the structure of our course. Great. Thanks, Ashley. Visual Arts offers a range of undergraduate and postgraduate programs that integrate practical, theoretical and conceptual skills and it provides our students with really marketable practical techniques while also anchoring these in a solid academic or scholarly foundation. Now making a choice of what path to follow once you're leaving school is incredibly tough, it's very daunting because there are just so many choices open to you. Um, but we want to make sure that you can make a living with the degree that you've chosen. And to some, visual arts might not seem like an obvious pathway to a job, to a stable job at least, but we're here to talk about why this is a huge misconception and also why Stellenbosch offers a unique approach to an art and design education that produces some of the most sought after graduates in the country, many of whom also go on to work internationally. So Ashley, if I was thinking about studying visual arts, um, and particularly at Stellenbosch, what could I expect and what would be the environment in which I would be working? Okay, so I think I'll maybe start with um, the building itself, the visual arts building, which is located in cent central Stellenbosch, um, surrounded by amazing greenery um, and a lot of student activities actually housed next to the New um, NLC Student Center, which mm. is quite a social hub. Um, in addition to that, um, we have a range of uh, facilities which students have access to 24 hours, um, which they can obviously access um, all, you know, in terms of um, carrying on working in studios. Mm. Um, but I'll just go through a list of uh, what those facilities entail. Uh, it's obviously, starting off with lecture halls, we've got uh, a large lecture hall um, with additional smaller lecture halls. We've got communal uh, specialized studios as well as um, seminar rooms, um, dedicated workshops, as well as um, spaces where students can critique and showcase their work during media assessment um, and at the end of each project. Um, some of these specialized studios include uh, fully kitted um, um, with a computer Mac lab. Um, we actually have two of those. We've got a uh, a smaller Mac lab as well, where some of the students or senior students make use of that. Um, each computer is, um, has the latest Adobe software and other creative um, programs as well. We have a 3D uh, printing facility um, within the building itself, um, as well as a book binding studio with a large format printing um, uh, facility. In addition to that, we have the Viz Lab, um, which is currently available to postgrad studies. Next, we have a, the jury division, which consists of the gemology lab, um, jury design workshops, including the platinum and CAD um, spaces. Um, after that, we have the sculpture facilities, which include the metal, wood, uh, mold making, and casting workshops. Print making consists of an etching studio, screen print, and lithography studio. Um, and then we have a dark room, dedicated photography studio with um, all the necessary equipment so students can just come in, manage the spaces themselves and sign out whatever they need if they require any additional um, props and things like that. Um, and lastly, we have a dedicated drawing studio which various groups of students utilize um, throughout the um, allocated um, project times. So all of this is organized um, around a central courtyard um, or quad, which is important as it is a really vibrant social space where students often um, sort of hang out, um, take a break um, and chat amongst each other. Um, it's a relaxing space. Um, so often we'll find that students, um, if they 
don't um, sort of hang in or spend time in the student center, um, they can just take quick breaks and, and, and sort of relax and um, be within the building itself. Um, many students are open onto the quad, so it's quite an um, amazing experience of being able to see each other work um, throughout the uh, studio hours, um, the allocated studio order hours. Um, other facilities include the Gas Gallery, which is the university art gallery and acts as an extension of the department. Um, it's sort of walkway distance from the departments uh, located central Stellenbosch. So it's really convenient um, in terms of access. And we host a range of art exhibitions, um, events by staff and students, as well as invited guests. Um, so over to you, Catherine. Thanks. I mean, one fun fact about our department is that our creative jewelry and um, metal division, um, it, which it's the oldest such program of its kind um, in South Africa, dedicated specifically to critical thinking and skills development in the discipline of contemporary jewelry design and manufacture. And it's an internationally recognized program with really strong international links. And it's fantastic to see the way that Ashley's described um, the, 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 the specialized nature of the studios and how these kind of flow through the building is that within a discipline like jewelry, which is very rooted in very traditional, um, highly skilled manufacturing techniques, um, is also one of the leading um, fields in adopting a digital um, technology and 3D design and prototyping. So it's a very um, wonderful example of how the traditional and the technologically innovative coexist within our space. And likewise, with the fine art and visual communication design programs, we have um, students who often partake in um, industry um, sort of projects where staff um, connect students with um, professionals um, to do real world or sort of applying what they learn within the studio and, um, and theory in a practical real world real world uh, experience or scenario. Um, so just to add to that, um, so there's a, there's a strong emphasis on building professional networks that accounts for both um, among students, especially after they graduate, but also in terms of making or, or connecting with, with experts within various fields. Um, and so maybe we'll talk more about the uh, programs. Yeah, um, absolutely. A, a bit more about it. Absolutely. Thanks, Ashley. So the complex and shifting nature of society and the job market is the reason that we focus on disciplinary integration, um, within, which forms really the foundation and our approach um, to our practical programs. Um, this means that as a student within our environment, you'll learn an enormous range of both practical and research skills, and be able to think critically about the relationships between art, design and society, and then also really importantly, to understand the role of art and design in technological innovation and positive social impact. As a visual arts student, you'll enter the program having a chosen specific or specialist, specialist pathway, um, either fine art, visual communication design or jewelry design. Um, but your first year is integrated, which means everyone, are, um, all the students work together in a communal space and are exposed to various technical skills um, it's only in the last term where students start, um, they, start get uh, or they are divided into the specialized fields where they start, um, or we as staff introduce them to what is expected, um, especially going into second year. Um, just to add to that as well, um, the, 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 the structure of the course incorporates a range of technical, conceptual, and theoretical tools and skills that students learn to prepare them to work a little bit more independently, um, especially going into and progressing into second year and then obviously third and fourth year, um, where it's completely more independent. These include skills such as drawing, um, and drawing in the conventional sense, but also in terms of uh, problem solving and thinking, um, sculpting, printmaking, typography, illustration, painting, photography, metalwork, goldsmithing, and new media technologies. Sometimes all of these together um, and sometimes as part of a disciplinary group. From second year onwards, you move, you move to your field of interest or choice, um, but these also include subjects like digital production, drawing, which you obviously carry through as a foundational uh, set of skill, 
and, and constantly developing that into third year, um, which obviously becomes a little bit more independent. And that's the reason for that is so that each student, as they progress through each year, they develop and build on a set of skills that allow them to work more independently and apply the theory that they have been exposed to through visual studies and various other um, BA subjects um, um, in an integrated way. From third year, you'll start working more independently, and by fourth year, which our degree is equivalent to honors level, um, you are expected to be um, sort of work independently, it's self-motivated, and to act and think critically and creatively uh, with appropriate um, self-knowledge and confidence in areas of specialization. Um, that includes um, as well as, um, so maybe just, <laughs> I'll repeat that. Um, so from third year, um, you start working more independently, and in fourth year, the degree is equivalent to an honors level qualification. You expect it to be very self-motivated, to act and think critically and creatively with appropriate self-knowledge and confidence in specialization in art and design, as well as, um, as well as within the broader context of personal and social functioning. The fourth year degree is equivalent in honors, which means that it enables students to continue the studies in postgraduate um, offering that we have um, both locally and as well as catering them to um, study abroad in various other programs. A highly skilled staff uh, of uh, postgraduate, uh, highly skilled staff of other, offer postgraduate degrees all in the way, all the way to um, doctorate level. Yeah, so our integration and specialization um, allow students to work across various fields and produce exceptional work, understand the relationship between art and design, um, while also acknowledging current um, art and design trends, as well as go beyond this and discover new creative modalities in visual art and design practice. Hopefully, you might be future innovators. So our ethos really is to create thought leaders. We regard art and design as knowledge systems, um, and knowledge systems that have equivalence to scientific research, um, and that's a particular area of interest um, of mine and how these worlds collaborate. Um, because what we're really interested in doing is using our artistic and design skills um, as creative problem solving skills um, to apply art and design in an innovative, sustainable and real world applications. And we also shouldn't forget about visual studies, which is a fascinating subject um, and really an anchor subject um, within um, the visual arts program. It's automatically part of your visual arts degree, but it's also offered as a general BA subject. So you'll naturally interact with other students um, from across the faculty of art and social sciences. And visual studies is an amazing amalgam of what, might we, what we might traditionally know to be art history, as well as media and cultural studies. Um, you'll look at photography, film, art, sculpture, all manner of the visual, including social media, for example, which is a really important um, visual communication tool um, in our world at the moment, and be able to think critically about how we engage with visual media and its communicative power. But Ashley, as one of our digital specialists um, in the department, could you chat a little bit more about the kinds of digital skills on offer as part of a visual arts degree? Because often people think it's just traditional painting, um, sculpture and drawing, um, and why digital skills are now so integrated within a contemporary artist and designers toolkit and why they're so important for the future world of work. Thanks, Catherine. Um, it's, it's, it's we in a, in a time where um, the, the, the skills that we learn within digital production within the department, which we offer individually and we have dedicated uh, projects uh, taught in terms of um, digital production, um, is to facilitate both students' um, technical skills in navigating a digital world, but as well as being able to be versatile in the industry to explore um, various other um, job opportunities. So we have a range of digital software and skills that we share with the students and train, including the Adobe uh, Creative Suite. So students have access to that throughout the entire um, undergrad uh, four-year degree. Um, we do 3D prototyping, both in design 
as well as um, um, more analog processes and how we translate that between the different media. We also look at how we can then explore presenting those um, sort of experimentations and ideas in an augmented reality, uh, both in terms of digital presentations as well as um, um, exploring new ways of, of, of exploring digital media and, and um, opening it up to the public and conversation. Um, we also offer an introductory course to stop motion animation with emphasis on storytelling. Um, it's very important to note here that the techniques are an introduction and obviously students who then choose to specialize in their senior year then have the option to do sort of self-independent research. But this includes claymation, for example, um, pixelation, puppet animation, cutout, and object motion. So over to you, Catherine. Thanks. Uh, what would you say, Ashley, are the advantages of studying at art and design at Stellenbosch University specifically? Because obviously school leavers um, or you know, even mature students have such a range of options open to them at the moment. What makes our offering unique? Um, I think there's a, there's a, you know, the university course is meant to be a broad education. Um, we, do, we don't train students to educate themselves, to think, um, or we do train students Maybe just run that bit again. I'll run that bit again. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Not there. Yeah. I'm going to go from the top of. Yeah. I think he got the question probably, so I don't think I need to repeat no, the question. No, you don't have to. Okay. But I'm struggling to sort of see this. Um, thanks, Catherine. A university course is meant to be a broad education. We do not train students. We educate them to think, make, and do. The emphasis is on critical awareness and social impact to become thought leaders, innovators, and contribute towards a productive society. The course emphasizes individual strengths of students are, who are well-rounded and versatile. A visual arts degree is also about acquiring some of the most desi desirable transferable skills out there. What does this mean? Um, years of experience have taught us, um, including our, you know, looking at our alumni and following their career, whether they graduate with specialization in visual art, v communication design, fine art or jewelry design, they are uniquely able to move seamlessly between diverse vocational fields within creative industries. All our graduates are equally equipped with entering professional fields such as advertising, graphic design, illustration, jewelry designer, art practitioner, computer aided designer, journalism, media production, photography, curatorship, lecturing, art critic, art theorist, and corporate design com consultant. So let's talk more about the career possibilities. People often say art is not a real job. But that's not the case. Um, by all means, it's, it's, it's a definite no. There are quite a range, a wide range of career opportunities, including that of professional art practice, being an art teacher, graphic designer, as I mentioned before, um, manufacturing of goldsmith, computer aided design. Um, so I'm just kind of adding more to that. Um, museum and art gallery custodian, art dealership, uh, being an entrepreneur um, in the art industry or design industry, gemologists, technical expert in sculpture, as well as um, having technical skills such as welding, casting, um, offset lithography, printing, as well as fields such as um, the exploring fields such as uh, film production, art direction, photography, and advertising. The next question is, what kind of job could I get one day? It's a complicated art industry, competitive and demanding environment. But an art degree is also a highly desirable qualification in the new knowledgeable economy where creative thinking and transferable skills are applicable to a range of creative fields. It also equips you with the imagina ma imagination, adaptability and resourcefulness to invent the job that you wish to have. Our students are sought after due to their broad skill sets, which allows them to um, do a range of things. Some go into 
um, advertising, um, as I mentioned, teaching, facilitators, facilitators of social projects. Um, they also work all over the world, locally. Um, students set up um, sort of entrepreneurial or um, uh, small businesses and then expand on that. Um, and today, especially with all the technical and digital skills that you acquire throughout your studies, you can now actually use and utilize those in terms of self-promotion, ma um, managing your own creative um, career and business, as well as um, working with people, which we already as staff introduced you to um, throughout projects. Shall I do the next bit? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, Ashley. Um, I think really the point here is that a visual arts degree with the kind of integrated level of art and design that we teach at Stellenbosch University with a view to positive social impact means that you acquire the skills that you can transfer into a whole range of different fields, um, as Ashley has described. Um, but importantly, doing this at a university like Stellenbosch means that this is also grounded in very, very strong critical and conceptual thinking. So you'll have a very strong theoretical basis. You'll be able to justify why you're using the technique that you're using or why you are taking, uh, using the methods that you're using to solve a particular problem. Um, for many of us, as artists and designers, we're really interested in the practical part of the work, the practical being in the studio or being out in the field or working with um, local community groups or what, wherever or whatever we might be doing in terms of our creative work. But some of us are also interested in pursuing postgraduate studies. So if that is your pathway, um, and you may not even know that that is your pathway now, but you might discover that it could be your pathway um, once you're in the undergraduate program. There's a whole range of options to choose from, including doing masters, um, an integrated practice-based masters in art and design, so continuing what you would be doing in the studio. Um, but you can also do a BA honors with a specialization in illustration. We also have a master's that specializes in visual studies. So if you're more of a, of a scholar or a curator, um, you might want to focus um, your attention there. You can also do um, specialization, postgraduate specialization in art education, which is a coursework-based program um, where you also do a service learning component um, within some kind of educational context. So schools, um, tertiary, etc. And then you could even take this further into a PhD. And Stellenbosch University has one of the first uh, PhD programs that allow practitioners, so people who work in studios as artists and designers, do, to do a practice-based um, PhD uh, qualification as well. So what kind of person, Ashley, would you say is a good fit for a visual arts degree? Um, our requirements, often we get the question from learners you know, what, what, what prerequisite or what subjects do I need in order to uh, enroll, first of all, in the undergraduate program? Um, but then also in terms of what kind of person, as you mentioned, is ideal for. Um, if you use your own initiative, are uh, intellectually curious mm. and playful, inventive, creative thinker, this program is definitely for you. The program details, um, and so I'll explain in terms of the each individual um, stream um, namely visual communication design, fine art, and jewelry design, as a sense of um, sort of understanding what each one of those entail. entail. Um, visual communication design is a broad term encompassing graphic design, information design, instructional design, visual story telling, experience design, and various projects in cultural and visual information, featuring a broad range of media, and, and formats, each of these visual messages is designed with a specific fun function, purpose, and audience in mind. Design practitioners of the 21st century are facing a multitude of challenges in much broader and complex uh, strategic contexts than ever before. Material, environmental, social changes require future designers to anticipate problems um, and solutions rather than solving known problems. Um, and I think that's especially where the integration um, comes into play because students are able to sort of anticipate and invent new ways of, you know, um, exploring all the different ways of problem solving, but also in terms of approaching it from a completely different perspective as well. Um, so furthermore, while technology is constantly changing and advancing design tools, the real pursuit designers remains the same 
to create content and meaning and to make positive contribution towards culture. By encouraging a way of working that accepts the unknown and the unseen, the visual communication design course focuses on optimizing the designer's ability to embrace uncertainty and rise to, the, to meet the challenges of the future. Um, a breakdown of a sort of broad fields that are covered within the vi visual communication design curriculum includes, but not limited to, typography, visual narrative and storytelling, uh, branding, bookmaking, bookbinding, digital production, um, web design, motion graphics, photography and video, um, sustainable design, inclusive design, and experience design. Moving. Cool. Shall I, shall I talk a little bit about fine arts? Sure, okay. Um, so Ashley recently took over the coordination of the fine arts program, which I headed up since uh, 2006. So um, I'm happy to talk a little bit about it because it's changed quite a lot um, over the years. And in fine arts, our principal objective really is to promote an understanding of the critical relationship between theory and practice. Um, art really is a very demanding um, and competitive career choice. Um, however, we're also seeing now that contemporary art really is a massive contributor to the gross domestic products of certain countries with contemporary artworks attracting massive um, prices on the auction market alone. And we're also seeing the development of things like NFTs. Um, so really the art world has become incredibly diverse, um, incredibly complex, um, and a fascinating animal to kind of understand. And that's where we focus in um, within fine arts. So when we refer to the art world, we're really suggesting something about its special conditions. It is a world <laughs> um, all by itself. Um, and it's also a pretty unique economy where w a lot of our ideas about culture, about language, about taste, about style, entrepreneurship, knowledge and value are constantly being put to the test. And the art world often shapes some of our thinking about these things. So a wide range of skills is really necessary um, to keep things on track. And our degree um, is a degree in the kind of creative thinking that we believe the new knowledge economy really seeks out. Um, so it's less a question of getting a real job um, than having the imagination and the skills to really invent the job um, that you wish to have. So the overarching aim of the fine arts program really is fourfold. So we provide you with a broad range of technical skills that you use in the production of contemporary artworks and that you're also able to talk about those artworks, why you've made the choices that you've made. Um, we really foster an understanding of the critical relation between um, form and conceptual thinking and how the manipulation of materials and processes um, and techniques all create meaning in themselves. We help you develop and a visual language and the ability to articulate that visual language in a way that is personal and you, unique to you, um, which you can also defend if you put your work on public exhibition, for example. But most importantly, all of these things assist you in really becoming a confident, independent and self-reliant, creative human being in the world with real agency to create the world that you wish to see. Um, and then we have jewelry design, which I've spoken a little bit about um, already, but there are two interlinked aspects of jewelry. There's the visual conceptual design component and the technical execution um, and representation on the other. Um, it's really a multifaceted um, communication and representational tool. I often think about jewelry as a form of wearable sculpture, um, while it also has an obvious sort of commercial um, possibility. So how the body is adorned can reveal something about our background, our identity, our mood, our social standing, our political viewpoints, and even our cultural practices. And jewelry itself can provoke, critique, record, and humor. Um, many of its messages are all around us. I mean, the jewelry that I've chosen to wear today being a case in point. So the jewelry course aims to educate creative jewelers who can contribute to the advancement of the discipline. And I think that's true of all of the courses that we offer, both in form and discourse. Um, so what I think is important to understand, Ashley, as well, for any student who's maybe considering coming is what does the course outline look like? What do you do? So we've talked a little bit about how you progress through the course, but then as a first year student, what do your subjects consist of? So you've got your uh, visual studies, your studio practice subject. You've got visual studies, like I've mentioned before. You also have an additional BA subject, and there you choose between um, subjects that are related to 
the lang visual arts is a language, visual arts and design is a language. So your choices are Afrikaans and Netherlands, English studies or sociology. And that's true for first and second year. Yes. And then drawing is also a subject that you do in first, second and third year. It's completely foundational. And it's also a requirement for you to progress. Passing drawing is a requirement for you to progress into your next year um, of studio-based um, studies. And then, like we said, your fourth year is much more independent. You're working more independently at an honors equivalent level. And you do one theory subject in fourth year. Um, so you complete your visual studies in third year. And then in fourth year, you do something called theory of art and design, which is a course that I'm responsible for coordinating. But there you're really working from your own research and your own creative practice is the thing that's guiding your, um, your creative research. So how to apply? We've put that in a, in a series of, of FAQ questions, which are available on our website, but Ashley can also take you through some of the finer details there. Yeah, so it's a two-step process, um, and students often, this is very important in terms of making note of the dates when students have to apply to the university and to our department as well. Because it's a specialized program, students have to submit a um, portfolio. So there's two important dates that students have to remember. One of them is the general application to the university. Um, that is in 30 June of this year. And then following that um, first September, students can access and download the portfolio requirements from our website. Um, or you can also access that on the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences um, general website for an open day. Um, where all of those, um, that information, more, more detailed information is available to you. If you do have any questions, you can contact uh, Yumna Williams or Aniki Molman directly um, if, regarding any specifics. Um, and then obviously, um, while you're in matric and you're applying, um, uh, in terms of your final results, we normally wait for those um, at the end of the year and then uh, depending on or pending on that, um, you then submit those after the fact and then um, await for final acceptance. Yeah. I mean, one of the questions that we're often asked is why is it necessary to um, put a portfolio together and can't I just, you know, design my own or send you my own um, independent work? And the portfolio we really take very, very seriously because, you know, not everyone has an opportunity to do art at school, for example. Art is not a subject that many students have on offer. Um, and also art is taught very differently in different environments. So we've designed this portfolio specifically to give absolutely everyone an equal opportunity um, to enter our program because we, we've designed these exercises that tell us quite specific things. So it's really important that you make very, very good note of when the deadline for that portfolio is due because unfortunately we can't accept late applications. We get far more applications than we have the space for, which is really unfortunate because we'd love to accept everybody. But our studios also can only accommodate a certain number of people, which ensures also the integrity um, maintaining the integrity of the program. So uh, receiving the portfolios is something that we look forward to immensely every year. It's extraordinary to see the range and the, the, the breadth of talent out there, but it is entirely, um, it's highly, highly competitive. Um, and we would really say that if you don't get accepted on your first try, absolutely try again. There are a range of conditions that might, you know, mean that you know, you're not accepted one year, but you could very well be accepted the next year. Um, but more importantly, come to us with questions about that portfolio if you're curious about any of the um, exercises. It's also really, really important that your portfolio is as complete as possible. You do need to do all of the exercises that are set out um, in the guidelines. But other than that, we're really looking forward to seeing who's going to apply um, for 2023. And like Ashley said earlier, if you can use your own initiative, you are inquisitive and curious and playful and inventive and um, a creative thinker, then this program is absolutely for you. And we look forward to welcoming you in future. Thanks. Thank you. I think we're done.
So if you can use your own initiative and are a creative, playful and inventive thinker and are intellectually curious, then this program is absolutely for you. And we really look forward to welcoming you um, into the 2023 cohort or beyond. Thank you. Thank you.